So I'd like to talk today about making a foam pattern in FreeCAD, sometimes also known as an acoustic foam pattern. Now you see this in packaging and you know on walls for acoustics and things like that. So let's get started. I'm going to make a new part. And we'll grab, first off, Tools, Add-on Manager. And if you don't have the Parametric Curve Macro installed yet, I'll show you how to do that, right? We'll uh, go right over to the uh, Macros tab and let it download from GitHub. And uh, you'll see the 3D parametric curve. You simply click install if it's not installed. And then I'm gonna close this. So with this macro, we'll go to macros, select this one, choose execute. With this parametric curve screen that comes up, we'll simply say always on top. Now that's a Linux feature, so if you're doing some other operating system like Windows or Apple, you may not have that option, but it sure is handy in Linux. So in our equation, I'm going to be very simple. T, 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 T. Maybe Y will make a cosine of T. And then we'll come down here to max, and we'll say how about 35. And we'll make sure that this is on B spline and create the curve. Now to actually see the curve, we have to come up here and uh, make sure that this is refreshed. And there's our curve, right? So if I go to, how about the top view? We have a sinusoidal curve. And then let's make that duplicated here. We're gonna say, how about pi times two? We'll create curve. And then we'll say pi times four, create curve. Pi times six, create curve. Pi times eight, create curve. Pi times 10, create curve. So we've got an increments of two pi. And there's our, those are all the, uh, all the sinusoidal curves that we've made so far. Let's go now and alter this to sine of t minus pi divided by two, and that should give us a curve that is in the exact opposite phase of the one that we've made. And we're gonna say z is pi. Everything else looks good, so let's create the curve. And now if I go back to my top view, you can see we've got a curve that's in the exact opposite phase. Now, we'll say pi times three, create curve. Pi times five, create curve. Pi times seven, create curve. Pi times nine, create curve. And pi times 11, create curve. And those are the new curves that we've made. So let's take a look at what we're gonna do with the part if we uh, go forward from here. We we'll go to our B-spline, move over here. And then there's the next one. And so I'll just start to add these to a loft as I go, hopefully in the order that I've intended them. Now, I'll say OK and see what that leads to. And FreeCAD is doing a bit of thinking here. There we go. So. This could be good enough for a lot of people, right? We've got some distortion on the edges, but we can certainly use the surface that is less distorted on the inside. So looking at it from the front, you can even see like a shading difference. There we go. And then if I look at it from this side, you can tell that we're still not quite even as we go through, right? We're, we're okay. Looking at it from this side, right? There's Still some distortion, but the middle is kind of usable. But what if we want it to be better? Well, let me hit delete on the loft. And we know that between each of these uh, lines is pi. <clears throat> so let me go back to my parametric curve, which I have here on top. And we want to go, say, down the x direction. So our x is going to be t, our y will be 0 and our z will be the increment of pi divided by two. So let's create a curve. And you can tell we've drawn a straight line in between each curve. Now, let's say pi 
plus pi divided by 2, create curve. And we've created the next line in between the next curves. And then I'll say 2 times pi plus pi divided by 2, create curve. We've done the next one. Now the pattern is pretty easy because we just increment it by 3, create curve, 4, create curve, 5, create curve, 6. All right, so now we've put straight lines in between all of these. And let's see how that works for us. I'm going to go back to part. We're going to say loft. And I'm going to go with my first B spline. And then I'm simply going to scroll with my directional arrows until I find the next segment. And I'll fast forward this so you don't have to sit through my nonsense. But that's going to be my pattern, right? I simply um, look in the graphics display and scroll down this list until I find the very next one to add. All right, with all of those added on the selected profiles in the right order, I'm going to say OK. And this will again cause FreeCAD to think for a little bit, but we'll see what happens. And there we are. So I go to my right, and I go to my left, and I'll go to the top. And everything seems to be uniform between all of these. I think there's a little bit of distortion right here that we that we'll cut out, but as far as the middle is concerned, we're very consistent. So this would be that foam pattern that we would be looking for. So how do we turn this into a solid? Well, I've got two suggestions, and we do want to address that uh, distortion over here, right? So it's distorted near the edges, but otherwise we're looking good. So let's first off make this into a solid by going to the sketcher. And we'll sketch on the XZ plane. And I'll actually let's import some of these edges. And let's make a construction rectangle. I think my mouse is wearing out. All right. We'll go from here to here, shift H, and uh, two millimeters seems fine. Shift V to add a vertical dimension. Two millimeters again seems fine. Uh, let's do a little model cut to make sure that I can see what I need to see. Again, two, and then from here to here, two, right? We'll close that, and now we'll go back to part. So from boss, we'll say, I better close my, or minimize my parametric curve. 10 is fine, we'll say symmetric and okay. So I've done an extrusion that kind of uh, skips the edges where we'd have distortion. And now, and this is important, I select my part first and then my tool second, and I'll slice apart. Right, so we choose slice apart. And then FreeCAD again does a fair deal of thinking on this. There we go. So I can open up my little folder of slices and I'll choose a slice that I don't want and hit the delete key. And if I want a little bit more graphical clarity, uh, I can open up my tree to my loft and simply hit the space bar on each spline to make it not visible anymore. Boy, do I have a lot there. And there we have a solid with a foam pattern. 
All right, next, let's do another version of this in case we want something a little bit different. Um, so let's, in fact, let me do a save as. And let's delete this folder. Delete this slice. We'll delete this extrude. And we're going back to basics, right? So we'll grab the sketcher, create a sketch on the XZ plane. And you know what? Again, I'll import, say here and here. And this time we'll grab a driving rectangle. We'll go from corner to corner. And then I'll grab another rectangle. And I'll say Shift H, give that something like 15 millimeters. So like these two points, Shift H again, another 15. We'll grab this point, Shift V, 15. And I'll select from here to here, Shift V, 15, right? So we're just taking a small chunk of that foam. And now we will close. We'll go to part and extrude. We'll go symmetric. Again, 10 is fine. We'll say OK. So next we're just going to do a cut. We'll say extrude and then we'll choose our tool. Again, that order is important. And we'll do a cut. And it looks like there was a problem with the cut, so we'll say Control Z. And I see what and I see what the problem is, right? We've got something hanging out over here. So we'll go back to our extrude, we'll edit the sketch. We'll make these, you know blue and it'll just go a little bit further out from the surface because usually I don't come across that error. So again we'll come with extrude and then choose the loft. Actually I need to choose my loft and then extrude. Again that order is important. We'll go with cut. There we go. So the last time we chose that uh, it didn't work because I was trying to make a cut with something infinitely thin which of course would not work. So I've got this little guy right here. I made it small on purpose because it'll compute faster. You can go much bigger than this and, you know, keep going with the regular pattern and it won't be a problem. So we will select this cut and we'll select offset. And there I've offset my surface. Now the smaller of the offset you go, the more likely it is to work. I don't think there's a problem here, but let's go 0.25, right? Nice quarter millimeter difference. And then I'm going to fill my offset and then say OK. So there we have a nice foam pattern that is at a constant thickness, right? So if you're doing something like injection molding where you need a constant thickness on a complicated surface, this is a great tool to be able to generate that constant thickness. So Usually, if there's a failure, it's because it's too thick. The idea is if the thickness is greater than your minimum radius of curvature, it will not work. Even if it's the same as your min minimum radius of curvature, it will not work. So if, if in doubt, go thinner. Um, hopefully, this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.